is really, really hard. And I, mommy wishes I could switch with you. Mommy would do anything to fix you. Holly Schmidt's 15 year old daughter Kayla is in a Utah hospital right now with a severe spinal cord injury. On January 6th, she was in a terrible car crash right down the street from their home in Star. Kayla was driving with her sister, 17 year old Emily, when they hit a construction excavator parked in the right hand lane of that road. The girls couldn't see it because of the thick fog that night. This past month has been heartbreaking for the Schmidt family, but the community, the community of Star has embraced them and is helping them carry them through all of this. This morning, we share Kayla's journey in our Sevens Hero. I got the call from my husband. On January 6th, nurse Holly Schmidt had just started her shift at the St. Luke's ER in Nampa. And he said, you got to come home now. And I said, what, what? He said the girls were in an accident and they can't get Kayla out of the car. Holly's teenage daughters, 15 year old Kayla and 17 year old Emily were going out to eat that foggy night. Emily was driving and didn't see an excavator parked near their home in Star. She crashed right into it. Kayla had to be extracted and was rushed to St. Alphonsus. The first question I asked was, is she moving? Is she moving her legs? Is she moving her arms? Is she awake? I just prayed. I literally just put my head down and I just prayed. That night, word of the accident spread quickly through the small town of Star. When there's something that happens, everybody in this town really comes together to help others out. Star's mayor, Trevor Chadwick, says plans were quickly made for a prayer vigil for Kayla. The accident happened Saturday, uh, Friday night and that vigil was on Sunday night and um, there was I, I don't know, five, 600 people or so there. And everybody was there to pray for, for Kayla and the Schmidt family. The community came together and they put these Pray for Kayla uh, bracelets together. There was a meal train that was done, right? And the meal train to feed this family all the way through February. I mean, that's incredible to, for all these people to jump on board. A GoFundMe was also organized. So many people wanted to help. Over $90,000 donated so far. I look at it and I'm just like, it, it's, I, I can't believe it. Hey, Kayla. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. Holly kept the community updated on Kayla on social media, posting videos and photos from the hospital. Her attitude is nothing short of inspiring. I have my mind and my memories and my voice. Uh -huh. And I would be scared if I didn't have those things. And even if I never walk again or be able to move again, there's so many advancements in technology to help me. You got this. If anybody can do it, it's you. And we don't know what God's going to plan for you. We don't know yet. We have to trust him, right? After two weeks at St. Alphonsus. They did all they could for her. She was ready to be transferred to you know, a different level of care, you know, inpatient rehab. Kayla was transported by air to the University of Utah. Her injury is just devastating. We didn't know how, you know, how severe this really was until we got her to Utah, to be honest. Right now, Kayla is paralyzed from her shoulders down. She does have some movement in one of her hands. It's now that journey begins with trying to see how much sensation and movement that she can achieve with their therapies. Big sister and best friend Emily visits as often as she can to lift Kayla's spirits. She is devastated and still processing what happened that night. They're so close and I'm just as concerned about Emily as I am for Kayla. I'm on high alert with her. She's got a lot. Kayla also gets visits from her big brother Alex and her little brother, eight-year-old Noah. He's very protective of her. He wants to be right there with her and he holds her hand. Each day, Kayla is working so hard to get more movement. And when she feels defeated, I'll square myself off in front of her wheelchair and she won't want to look at me. And I'll say, Kayla, we are just going to do this minute by minute today. And when you want to quit, I'm going to be here to help you go forward. Your mommy and your daddy are going to do everything to give you the best life. What's carrying this family through is their faith and the amazing support from the community. The bracelets, car decals, 
even painted rocks. I read her every card, I read her every message, I read her every text. Mayor Chadwick says when she's ready, the community of Star will welcome Kayla with open arms. It's a big thing to make certain that we all continue to pray for her and, and do what we can uh, to lift that family up in spirits. The Schmidt family is so grateful for everything. It makes me feel like, like Kayla is gonna be, she's gonna be embraced. Seven zero. And just this week, Kayla started recording a video blog of her experiences at the hospital. She says there are good days and there are hard days, and she wants to document all of it. But one thing she loves, Justin, is getting mail to lift her spirits. And you can see her address on your screen right now at that Salt Lake City Hospital. We will put this on the website as well for you. If you want to send her a letter, a card, a gift card, maybe a care package, something to help her get through. We also have a link to the family's GoFundMe and the meal train. They say they are so humbled by that GoFundMe because they just have no clue how much all of their expenses are going to be when they finally adapt their home and bring Kayla home. So they have a lot to consider in the future, but we will certainly keep you updated on her progress. Yeah, and that's the story Strong of this girl. community coming together to help folks who need it. <music>
is love. This is our, our classroom. Like I mentioned, we are a one classroom facility. So when they come in, they all take placement tests. Those placement tests will tell us where they're at academically and we'll curate a study plan just, that's just for them. So this is, this is our kitchen here, and because of awesome organizations and donors in the community, we've been able to keep food in there, uh, in, the, in the freezer and fridge. They stay focused because you know their, their stomachs are full and they're not empty, so we take a lot of pride in, in keeping that uh, stock of food. This small building is leased from the Nampa Housing Authority. Breaking Chains is funded by community organizations, donors, and one of their biggest supporters, the Idaho State Police. They love our program, they believe in our program, they believe in our kids. And so that's one I take just great pride in because I love to have that relationship with them to, to tell the community and even to tell our kids, like, look, Idaho State Police cares about you. They offer art classes. There's a small lounge where students can play pool, and they even have a recording studio. Graduate Raimundo Reyna says this place changed him for the better. His goal, to sell real estate. If I'm not at work, I'm either at home. I'm not really in the streets like that anymore. Luis is a teacher, a mentor, a father figure, a role model. I felt welcomed automatically. We spotted Naima Martinez painting this mural on one of the walls. It's the Virgin Mary. She's also a graduate and now in cosmetology school, but she keeps on coming back. When I came here, I just got out of juvenile detention. Um, I got in trouble. I ended up coming here and it was just a family feel. I kept on coming here until I was able to get my GD. And then I graduated, I kept coming here, and I finally decided to start painting this. Just being surrounded by these kids is, has completely changed my life. It didn't take long for me to realize that being here, I wasn't changing them. They were changing me. These kids are our future leaders of our community, and they're the ones that are going to make a difference here. Remember Jose, the barber? So yeah, this is where I'm at right now. When I think about Jose, it's hard not to get emotional. Did he have some bad days? He did, but he got through them. It just, it just fills me with emotion to see where he's at because I know he's, he's off to great things. I know one day he, he will have his own, uh, his own barber shop here in Canyon County, and so I look forward to that day. Don't ever, don't ever think that Luis won't understand you because he's, he's been through all of it, you know? He saves lives, honestly. He saves lives for sure. He, I mean, he saved me, you know, like without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Luis Granados and the staff at Breaking Chains Academy. All I know is that our doors are open and, uh, and they'll stay open. Seven's Heroes. Just an amazing man. And Luis Granados has a big vision for the future expansion. And if Breaking Chains can secure more funding, they can help even more people in cities across Idaho, even more teenagers. Remember that judge that Luis told us about, the one that took a chance on him? That was Judge Deborah Bale. And we looked her up, and I told her about Luis. And then she called him, and they had the chance to meet and tour Breaking Chains last week. Luis was able to thank her in person and show her what he has done with that second chance that she gave him all those years ago. Wow. For more information on Breaking Chains Academy, how to enroll, or how to get involved and donate to help more teenagers in Canyon County, go to KTVB.com, click on this story. He's just like any other kid. He really is. He's always smiling, always got a friend with him. He, he doesn't let anything hold him back at all. 14-year-old Nathaniel Rosa goes to Vision Charter School in Caldwell. He's in the eighth grade. He loves school, his friends, he sings in the choir, and he just happens to have Down syndrome. He's also a proud member of the middle school basketball team. And you know what? Something really incredible happened at a recent game against Vail Middle School, something that no doubt will make you smile today. This is the heartwarming story of Nathaniel's big shot this morning's Sevens Hero. He is a light. That's what he is. You could say Nathaniel Rosa is a popular guy here at Vision Charter School, especially on the hardwood. Ever since he joined basketball, we've been cheering him on, and he's been so, doing so well. Oh, his energy is insane. I mean, seriously, yeah. he's such a cool kid. He just moved to Idaho with his family two years ago. Woo! It's my best friend. I really like my friend, too. It's been great. Right here in Idaho, I love it. It's really fun. 
being in the team with all my friends. We visited him at a recent practice. I feel famous. You are famous, that's why we're here. Yeah, this is really fun. Because something really special happened at a recent game against Vail Middle School. It was the end of the game, Vail was up, and with 40 seconds left. They had been chanting Nathaniel's number, which is 42. 42, 42, just like that, and we're like, put him in, put him in. So we put him back in and they just turned off the clock and then just kept passing the ball, both teams. And they let Nathaniel just repeatedly shoot over and over and over. It's truly spectacular. 34 tries later, he finally sinks it in and they all just came running. It was like an NBA final game. It was crazy. The, the entire stands were like flooding Nathaniel. He couldn't even find him. He was like in the midst of all these kids. Nathaniel felt like a star, but he is so humble. And I finally made that thought and I really did it. It was like a moment right there in my life that I felt really, um, I felt really good. Like all the team, my best friend, even Vail came all around me. He came out of that huddle and he was like, I have so many friends. This is the best day ever. I mean, he was just, so excited and he got his picture taken with the other team everyone in that building was moved i don't know how you couldn't have been and i i will never forget it our players will never forget it forever touched forever changed by that moment after he made the basket everybody comes running off and we all huddled around him cheering him on oh it made me so happy i honestly was rude to tears like Nobody's ever done that. No other team has ever done that for them. And when they did that, I was just so happy. I personally went up and thanked almost everybody. I'm like, you guys are the best. That was insane. You couldn't, that was perfect. I love Vail so much. He says he'll always remember that special night and the Vail basketball team. I have a lot of fans, a lot of great fans. There's no I and team. I'm the, I, I'm no one man show. We are a team. To all the Vail Middle School players. I will forever fly on Eagle's Wings Day. Like it was absolutely incredible. And these kids didn't know Nathaniel. They didn't know he was gonna be there. It was just in the moment, this is what they did. It was their natural instinct to just be incredible human beings. It was beautiful and I'm I'm so grateful. You are Seven's Heroes. So I just want people to know that they're just two normal kids. They are in this, an unusual circumstance and just treat them normal. They like to be treated like any other kids because they are. Callie and Carter Torres are twin girls. They're six years old, they love to play, they love school, and what makes them so unique and special is that they are conjoined. They're devoted mom and dad. They work to raise awareness and acceptance for their little girls, and it's working. I spent a day with the Torres family to meet Callie and Carter, and as you're about to see, they are two sweet girls with their own personalities. In the sleepy small town of Blackfoot, Idaho. In this house on your typical street, you'll find a very special set of twin girls. Are you guys best friends? Yeah, but sometimes we're not best friends. They're just like any other twins. They argue, they fight, they love each other. Callie and Carter Torres are six years old. They started kindergarten this year, a huge milestone. And they have a lot of friends. How's school? How do you like school? Good. We really like school. Law. What's the best part about school? Um, lunch. Lunch, is that the best part? Yeah. What makes these little girls so unique is that they are conjoined twins. They're in school, they go to physical therapy, they do normal activities, they ride bikes. Even though Callie and Carter are two individuals put together, you have to remember that they are individual children. When mom, Chelsea Torres, had her first ultrasound in 2016. It was just a really big shock to us. When we found out we had conjoined twins, I was devastated. But Chelsea knew she wanted to give birth to her daughters. She wanted to give them every chance at life. Yes, I definitely wanted to keep the babies. I knew at the very beginning I wanted to keep them. 
The family was sent to Texas Children's Hospital for the rest of her pregnancy and delivery. The plan was... Birth separation, staying in Texas for a few years, and um, just getting them healthy and ready to come home. Callie and Carter were born via C-section on January 30th, 2017. They brought them to me and they cuddled them up to me and then they took them away and my husband went with them. And I told them, go, go with them, be with them, be, you know, I'll be, okay, I'll be okay. The girls were strong and they thrived in the hospital in the days after their birth. Just stayed with them the whole time. And they were just, just little cute babies. They were just Callie and Carter. <laughs> The twins went through extensive testing in Texas to see how their tiny bodies worked together. And they said, nothing's wrong with them. They're perfect, they're healthy. Take them home, treat them like normal kids. So that's what we did. The Torreses quickly learned separation of the girls would be life altering and life threatening. The chance of death for one or both babies was just too high. If they were to separate, they would have probably ostomy bags, colonoscopy bags, um, medications that they would have to take, and all this other uh, medical complex stuff that they don't have to deal with right now. So Callie Carter's anatomy is like two waves that crash together. So their top part is themselves. They have two separate stomachs. Um, where everything starts to get jumbled is in the intestines, and then it comes to kind of one intestine, like the one bottom half. The girls are now working on walking together. How they walk is um, Callie controls the leg under her, Carter controls the leg under her. It takes a lot of teamwork. Yes, a lot of teamwork for them to do that. That is amazing, girls. Their nine-year-old brother Jason loves to give them piggyback rides and is one of their biggest fans. Say hi to the camera. Hi, hi. girls. Hi, girls. Hi. <laughs> they're both special to me. Um, they're both funny. They both love each other. I love them both. They play with each other. Uh, they're special. I see them as like just two individuals. They're just like anybody else. Here in Blackfoot, there are the occasional stairs, but these kindergartners are well known. When they say, oh look, it's you know Callie and Carter, they say hello, they kind of know them from the news. Thanks to social media, the twins have fans all over the country. So I made a page, uh, Beating the Odds with Callie and Carter on Facebook, and I decided, hey, this is what I was going to do to find people who had conjoined twins. And I did, I found groups, I found people, people have gotten in touch with me, you know, a lot of support, I needed a lot of support. Chelsea posts about the girls often, and their followers love to watch them grow and comment on their photos. Pretty positive comments about them, like, hey, you know, they're doing awesome, um, I can't believe they're walking. Mom says the insensitive or hurtful comments can sting, but the majority of the twins' followers are kind. It's easy to see why Callie and Carter are so lovable. Oh my gosh, girls. You are so sweet to hold. You guys are precious. Chelsea says one day the girls may want to be separated. She's leaving that major decision to them. We'll definitely try. If they decided, hey, we want to try to get separated, I said, okay, you're going to listen to what the doctors say. You're going to understand the odds. But if you want to go through with it and do it, then I'll support it. You know, it's not my choice to make, I don't feel. I don't feel like it's my choice to make for them. They're not broken to me. For now, these precious girls will grow up together here in Idaho, raising awareness for other conjoined twins around the country. Are you a good team together? Yeah. Callie and Carter are beating the odds, and they are our seven zeros. Such special little girls right here in Idaho. And for more information on Callie and Carter and how to follow them and their journey on social media, you can go to this story on ktvb.com. And I also wanted to mention, Justin, they have a wish list, too, an Amazon wish list. So if you want to send the girls something special to lift their spirits, they love to get care packages. So you can do that right now if you go to our website at ktvb.com. And I agree with them. My favorite part of the day, lunch and recess. Yes, yeah, the best parts. Followed by dinner. <laughs>